Hello, my name's Dawn Dickens and I work for the Manx Wildlife Trust. Um, I'm the Biodiversity Education Officer there. And I've been running a series of educational videos and this week it's the turn of yellow and black stripy things. So by the end of this video, I'm hoping you'll be able to tell the difference between a honeybee, a bumblebee, a hoverfly and a wasp. We're going to start off by looking at some um, pictures of anatomy and then we're going to go outside and see if we can actually put our new identification skills to the test. So here we have some pictures. We've got one of a honeybee, a bumblebee, a wasp and a hoverfly which isn't coloured in. Okay and I'm going to talk you through the differences between them. So honeybees, they have a thinner body than a bumblebee, okay? And they have very little hairs over their bodies. Bumblebees are full of hairs. They have black stripes of golden and also orange coloured stripes on them. Um, they're very passive things. They will only sting if they've um, been provoked. And honeybees will actually die when they've stung you. They usually live in large colonies. Um, they have been... Um, domesticated so we get beekeepers but you can actually find them in the wild as well you'll often see them in um, hollow trees around um, they're usually seen when they're visiting flowers collecting pollen and nectar and they're so helpful because they help us pollinate our crops and flowers and also we can get honey from them so if we look at a bumblebee the bumblebee has a much fatter body and the hairs are all over its body it's usually striped black and white or sometimes it can be a gingery color when it flies its legs hang down they're very very passive and they're not going to sting you unless they're really really provoked and surprisingly bumblebees actually can sting several times they live usually in small colonies usually under the ground in often in empty um, birds nests and they die out during the winter months and there's only the queen that's left that overwinters. They also visit flowers collecting pollen and nectar and they've got a very special role with some flowers that are specially adapted for them. They help us um, pollinating our flowers and crops. Okay, wasp, here we are. They have a very thin body shape, very like a bee, but can you see here, they've got a very nipped in waist not like the bee. Their legs hang down too when they fly and they're usually stripy yellow and black colours. They can be quite aggressive, more so in the autumn. And the reason for this is because um, when they're feeding their grubs, they get fed a little bit of honeydew from the grubs. So of course when the grubs hatch out, they don't get that sugar um, rush. So in winter, the, um, September time when it's coming up to winter, and they're not being fed by the um, grubs, then they're looking for sugar, and that's why they seem to buzz around your picnics and things. They can sting multiple times um, without dying, and they live in colonies, usually in roof spaces or lofts, and often in someone's shed. Um, they are good because they do pollinate um, flowers for us. And then lastly, we've got the hoverfly, and I'm gonna show you the lateral view here. Unfortunately, this isn't um, coloured in, but you can get them so they've got yellow and black stripes. Loads of people confuse them with wasps because, they, again, they've got a very nipped in looking waist, but not as much so as a um, wasp. But look at this very flat abdomen. Usually when you see them, they're very, um, you can see that very flat body. That's something really to look out for. And if we look at the top view, can you see here? They have huge, great big eyes. And these eyes are so big, they often touch in the middle, which you would never, ever get with a wasp. So this is another really nice picture to tell the difference between bees and wasps. As you can see, the bee is a lot more golden in colour. Whereas the yellow on a wasp tends to be, I think of it as more lemony. And those stripes are very, very distinct. It doesn't come up so well on this picture, but this really is quite a nipped in waist. But this is what I wanted to show you. Just have a look at the difference in those antennae. Wasps have these incredibly long antennae. Okay, and the bee is a lot shorter. Now wasps as well often get, um, and hoverflies often get mistaken. And this long antennae, gives away the game again because on hoverflies it's a lot shorter than that. 
So bumblebees, bees, um, they belong to the order Hymenoptera, okay, and they have um, similarities in their anatomy. So I thought it'd be really good just to go through the anatomy. So they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, three body parts, okay. They have antennae. Now the mouth parts will often change. Um, with bees, they have a drop down proboscis, which is um, a tongue sheath really. And inside that is the tongue. And I've got a lovely video that will show you how that um, works when the bee's cleaning itself. Okay, obviously they have six legs, um, but what's really interesting here is everyone thinks about um, pollen baskets. Um, pollen baskets, a bit of a misnomer really because it's not really like a basket it really is just a flattened area on the leg so what happens is when the bee lands on the flower a lot of pollen goes onto the body itself they spend a lot of time cleaning themselves and these hairs will pick off the pollen from their bodies what happens then is their brushed off by a little tiny comb rake here and in this joint here between the two different leg um, parts it, the pollen is collected okay it is mixed with a little bit of nectar okay and then that joint actually crushes compresses that mixture together and it's pushed up the leg these hairs on either side help hold that um, pollen sac in and also there's a hair in the middle from which it can hang as well. So it's pushed right on. They're stuck on so well, the pollen baskets, that um, the pollen sacks, that it takes 24 times more force than happens when it's flying to actually remove that pollen sack. And they can be absolutely huge. It's a really good way of collecting lots and lots of pollen and nectar, which they're then going to take back to their grubs. Um, the pollen contains the protein and the nectar is the carbohydrate in their diet. So there's a fantastic picture here that is just awesome of um, pollen sacs on a honeybee. Just look at that. That is amazing. You can see just how huge they can get. And it's something that most people pick up. And you can see very clearly how all the pollen sticks to all the hairs here. It's not just honeybees that can have pollen sacs because our good old bumblebee here you can see can have a pollen sac on its legs as well so you can download this sheet from our website um, but the, it surprises quite a few people to know that we have lots of different sorts of bumblebees now remember to tell a bumblebee um, it's got a very distinctive buzz sound um, when it flies the body is very very furry and it's usually a fatter body as well than than a bee or a wasp um, so how do we tell the difference between all these different sorts of bumblebees because there's 26 different sorts of species of bumblebee in the UK so basically we look at three main things and we split them into three groups according to their very end tail colour. So we have white, what we call the white tailed bumblebees. So here you can see we've got the garden bumblebee is a white tailed bumblebee, the buff tailed bumblebee is as well, the white tailed bumblebee. Okay, so when we start looking at them, they're going to get, start getting very confusing, aren't they? We can see with the buff tailed. The thing with the buff tailed is it's a female that has more of a buff to it that um, the males often look very different. In fact, male bumblebees, um, they, they're they usually a lot um, furrier and they often have like a moustache on their faces um, and they can have slightly different markings. So we've got the white-tailed bumblebees, okay? We've got what we call the red-tailed bumblebees and then we have we, what we call the ginger bees, which tend to be the carder bees. Okay, so they're the main key differences to look for. And then we start looking at the banding, the colours. And like I said, it can get very, very confusing. You can see these look very similar. So what you need to look for here now is the abdomen shape 
and also the size of this bumblebee is bigger than this one this one's a lot rounder okay so the buff tail bumblebee is usually bigger than the white tail bumblebee okay so it does get a little confusing but once you start getting your eye in then you you really start to notice these difference and the very interesting thing i just love bumblebees because they are so fascinating is they all have slightly different tongue lengths so a garden bumblebee has a tongue length of 12 millimeters so that's like the longest one then you get the red tail bumblebee at six millimeters so you can see that's quite a drop okay then you get the common carder which is six millimeters as well the early bumblebee is about four millimeters and the buff tail bumblebee can be up to eight millimeters so that affects what sort of flowers they are going to visit and collect nectar from but they also have this fascinating thing because they they do a buzz um, as they land it often shakes pollen off and snapdragons have latched onto this um, snapdragon flowers they particularly um, attract bumblebees in because that buzz actually um, shakes off that pollen onto the bumblebee itself so that it can go on and pollinate others so that it's a really really fascinating world um, later on we're going to have a look at a lovely bumblebee that's actually cleaning itself bees are very very um, clean creatures and they clean all that pollen off them and um, store it and it's a lovely video of that happening so now we're going to have a closer look at hoverflies um, because these very very often get mistaken for wasps and they're actually do you know they're fantastic for your gardens so hoverflies have one pair of wings. Their waist isn't narrow as a wasp. They have these lovely short antennae, and these pictures here really show it up. Can you see? They're almost stubby, um, almost like clubs, okay? And huge, huge eyes. And like we said before when we looked, they, they can meet in the middle. So here's some very common hoverflies that you will see around the island. Um, we've got the common drone fly here. The Batman hoverfly, they have fantastic names, don't they? The footballer hoverfly and the tapered hoverfly. Okay, and you can see that this one does look so like a wasp and this one as well. But can, look, can you see the difference? These antennae are so, so tiny and those eyes are absolutely huge. Okay, that waist as well on both of these, you can see here and here, isn't as nipped in as a wasp. Okay, and they literally do hover so take your time to watch them in flight they will hover in midair and don't forget that abdomen as well looks really flat a flat whereas on a wasp it's rounder okay and this is what is amazing about hoverflies and why you should really welcome them into your garden here this ugly looking thing is actually the larvae of a hoverfly and you know they love to eat aphids so you really need to attract hoverflies into your garden they are also so much underrated as pollinators they do so much hard work in our gardens and we really should welcome them if you go onto our website we have some links on how to um, use hover make hoverfly lagoons and also we've got that spotting sheet that I just showed you with the hoverflies on so this was a bumblebee I videoed in Summerhill Glen having a good old clean. So at the moment what it's doing is combing with its back leg on the other side of its body. But if you watch really carefully, at one point it'll drop down its tongue sheath and have a good clean and wipe it um, really clean and use that nectar and resin that might be on it to put onto um, its um, pollen baskets. There you go, there it drops down now and you can see it quite clearly. So they tuck these back when they're flying because otherwise it would get in the way. So we're just looking at this video now and the first thing I want you to, to tell is, first of all, is this a bumblebee, a hoverfly, a wasp or a honeybee? So have a good look at it. Okay, so this is actually a bumblebee. You can see that the fur covers the whole of the body 
um, the thorax and the abdomen, okay? And if you look as well, just look at the lovely hairs on that leg and you can start to see it picking up um, pollen. Now, if you did download our bee detective sheet, you can use it now to have a little look. And this is the very, very tricky thing with these. Um, it's very hard to tell a buff-tailed bumblebee from a white-tailed bumblebee. Um, but with this body shape here being, it's, it's longer rather than rounder, I would suspect that this one is probably a buff-tailed bumblebee. So here's our next one. Is this a bumblebee, a wasp, a hoverfly, or a honeybee? Okay, so you can see the hairs all over its body again. Um, this is one of those ginger bumblebees, and this is actually a common carder bee. And again, just look at the hairs all over that legs. Just ideal for combing off the pollen that's stuck to its body. There's a nice bottom shot of it. So, is this one a bumblebee, a honeybee, a hoverfly or what? Oh, there it goes. Keep watching because it's wonderful in the box. So here it comes again. Okay. So this is actually, when it comes back out again, you'll see it's covered in, in um, hairs all over its body. What a beautiful view of the pollen sacs there. Um, this is a bumblebee. Um, it's one of those strange, is it a buff tail or white um, tail bumblebee? Okay, so what's this one? Is it a hoverfly, a bumblebee, a wasp or a honeybee? Have a good look at the antennae and the size of those eyes. Have a look at that abdomen. Is it round or flat? So that one was actually a hoverfly. Okay, it was a tapered um, hoverfly. So remember, look for the close eyes together. This is definitely one of those hoverflies. This is called a migrant hoverfly. You can see that lovely flat tapering body there. So what have we got here? Well, have a look, it's got quite a tapered body and it does have hairs on its body as well. So there's no way it's going to be a hoverfly. Um, its eyes, though they're huge, don't meet in the middle. So this is a honeybee. Oops, and there actually it was just knocked off by a wasp. And there we can see more of the um, honeybees. And also there's um, a little fly in the background there too as well. So here we are again, can you see, look, this is definitely a hoverfly, see how flat that abdomen is, and look, we're getting a really good shot of those eyes that are actually touching in the middle, and you can just about, I know the focus isn't very good, but just make out those tiny club-like antennae. So here's another one, oh, look at this, we'll just follow it, catch up with it in a minute there, have a good look at this, really strong yellow and black markers, and look how tiny that waist is, do you see that? Definitely a wasp. Look how its wings are held up as well. Definitely can't mistake that. So this last video is a bit of an indulgence really. I was very lucky to go to Milltown um, to film these. And I spotted these bumblebees busy in these irises. Just look at the way they have to really cram their bodies in. And there's two stamens that drop down onto the back of the bumblebee as it goes in. Now, if you go on to our flower video we did earlier, you can see a little bit more about how flowers and bees interact. But I'll leave you with the lovely sounds. <laughs> 